It's funny how things work out. I thought this video was going to be about using acid test kits in winemaking. I ran a bunch of tests and got no results. My samples never changed color. Then I thought, well, I'll make this video about failures of acid test kits. But when I looked at the results on a large monitor, I noticed the samples did change color. I just didn't see it. The problem wasn't with the test kit. The problem was with the tester, me. In this video, I'll show you how to use an acid test kit. I'll show you my failures and successes, and at the end, offer some tips on how you can get a more accurate result. Drop the device. Get away from that keyboard. Step outside into Shred World. Most kits come with these items. Sodium hydroxide solution, phenothalene indicator, a cup with milliliter markings, and a syringe, also with milliliter markings. I carefully measured out 15 milliliters of wine and placed it in the cup. I added exactly three drops of phenothalene indicator to the wine in the cup. I filled the syringe with exactly 10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution. I slowly added the sodium hydroxide solution to the wine sample and swirled the cup after each addition to mix it. I continued in this manner until the color changed. Except I didn't notice any color change when running this first test. So I tried a second test. 15 milliliters of wine, three drops of phenothalene, slow addition of sodium hydroxide. I added and swirled and added and swirled. I ended up adding all 10 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide solution and still didn't see any color change. When I reviewed the test on a larger monitor, I noticed the color difference. So I went back and ran a third test using two 15 milliliter wine samples. The one on the left will show the wine color at the beginning and the one on the right will show the wine color at the end. I added and swirled the sodium hydroxide solution and after adding about seven milliliters, the color stabilized. The actual amount added was six and three quarters milliliters. I thought I had it all figured out until I got to the red wine. I'll show you that in a moment. But first, if you enjoy this video, please give us a like by hitting the thumbs up button down below. And while you're there, why not subscribe? For the red wine, I drew the same 15 milliliter sample, but I transferred it to a larger cup. I knew I would need to dilute the sample with distilled water to see the color change. I added 250 milliliters of water. Then I mixed in three drops of phenothalene solution and slowly started to add the sodium hydroxide solution. I slowly added and swirled but I ended up adding the entire 10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution without seeing a color change. The wine color was still too dark. For the second test, I added more distilled water than the first, 300 milliliters, and then I added the three drops of phenothalene. As soon as I added sodium hydroxide to the sample, I began to see ribbons of color, something I never saw in the white wine. I slowly added and mixed until I got to this color. The color stabilized after I added six and a half milliliters of solution. Here's a before and after. 
So here are some tips to help you get accurate results. You need to practice running these tests and you need to measure carefully. Most kits contain enough solution for multiple tests. Use distilled water to rinse and clean the equipment before use. And also use distilled water to dilute red wine sample. It's hard to get a few drops out of a syringe using your thumb on the plunger. Cup the syringe instead. And try not to get an air bubble in the syringe. If you're having trouble picking up the color change, use two wine samples per test. The one you don't add anything to will show the original color. A white background makes it easier to see the color change. Pipettes or other measuring devices are more accurate than the cup provided with the kit. Paying attention to these details will get you some accurate results. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe. Both of these features are free. There's no charge to like or subscribe.